Glad to have you back. You're watching Arise Africa. Well, joining me in the studio now to speak on the state of the nation, including to assess the performance of the present day government, is Chairman, Publicity Committee of the Action Democratic Party, the ADP, Prince Adelaja Adioye. Welcome to the program. Thank you so much for this. Thank you for joining me. Thank you. Let's start with your party, the Action Democratic Party, the ADP. Um, the party was founded to counter the two major political parties, the All Progressives Congress and the People's Democratic Party, the PDP. Um, would you say you came even close to being a third force during the elections? Thank you so much. ADP is the party founded on ideology to move away from what we are used to in the country. Because if you go back to 1999, uh, we return to democracy, you find out that we are not where we are okay. after many years after. Or where we should be. Where we should be. And we are looking at it that we cannot continue in this way. So that's one of the reasons why ADP came into existence. To move away, a clear departure from the norms and get us out of the entrapment that we have been. That is why ADP came into being. And the 2019 election is our first shoot in the national election. Mm. And we did credibly well. At least our party was able to, pro, you know, uh, uh, to uh, win election. We won House of Rep and we won a state assembly. At least it's a launching pad for us. You understand? So in the subsequent election, we're going to see areas where we need to fix you understand, to be able to provide the credible alternative that we call ourselves to Nigerians as, you know, as we move ahead. All right. Um, I think that answers my question, you know, um, how you would do things differently as a party for future elections. Does that answer it, or would you like to... We are going to, of course, like I told you, that, you know, our first shot was 2019 election. We are meeting... The party is meeting. We are looking at great areas. We are looking at areas where, you know, we had a few itches here and there, mm. you understand, to ensure that we provide Nigerians with what we call leadership, quality leadership, okay? Because what we have right now, we cannot actually call it leadership. Of course, we, we, there are a lot of things that is out there that Nigeria knows that <coughs> they are being agitative about, you understand? So those are part of why what we are going to work on to give Nigerians credible leadership, credible economic and political leadership mm. in, in the future. Okay, so let's move on to assessing the present-day government, the all-progressive-led government. Um, since the second term, how would you rate them in terms of the period it took to nominate the ministers, the screening process, and the swearing-in of the ministers? Well, I, I, I think uh, the answer is to your question is just uh, simple, okay? We are not uh, so optimistic about the government. Why we are not optimistic is that if you look at the crop of people, you know, who are um, in the ministerial list, okay, you find that a majority of them are politicians. You understand? You cannot actually grow economy or grow a, compre, a, con, a country, country when you have major people in the cabinet as pure politician, you understand? Look, just, let's go back to 1999, when Chief uh, Olusha Gobasujo came into power. The first thing he did was to go around the world to go and look for technocrats, to go and look for experts that can, that can actually, you know, help him to, 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 to bring Nigeria out of where we are coming from, you understand? When Obasanjo came, that was when we had a lot of reform, a lot of, you know, advancement in the country. We saw GSM revolution. You understand? It was through, during Obasanjo. Anti-graph that these people are saying they are fighting corruption now. Obasanjo set up EFCC. You understand what I'm saying? So there's nothing really so exciting about this government because politicians will continue to play, play politics for obvious reasons. But if we look at a, a ministerial list that... Round pegs are in round holes. Yeah. We are not going to, you know, uh, we are just going to sit back and say, let us watch what is going to happen. But as it is, we, we saw some of these people, they were as governors, some of them were, you know, senators, you know, and the likes. You understand? We saw their performance in their states. You understand? We saw what people were saying in their states. 
So now, bringing these people into a federal cabinet and expect them to do magic, of course, uh, you know, it's, it's nothing, we're not supposed to expect something fantastic. Our president did say that he would only appoint those that um, he knows. So um, we'll have to leave with that. Let's look at the anti-corruption fight of the party, the ruling party. Um, is it living up to standard expectations or does it leave much to be desired? Pastor Skeyamo, a prominent Buarist, who is also a junior minister, some years ago was prosecuting Goswell Apabio. Okay? Now, the same person, the prosecutor, is now a junior minister to somebody he was investigating. So I think that's answer your question. Because what is the corruption you are fighting when somebody that has been investigated is now compensated as a senior minister? And someone who is the prosecutor is now a junior minister under that person. So what corruption are we fighting? Those are the questions we need to ask ourselves. I don't know if you understand something. So what corruption are we fighting? Um, recently, there's a closure. Uh, the Nigerian semi border has been closed. Okay. Um, how does this closing of the border affect or impact on legitimate businesses, especially as the president said that the border was closed to um, stem the tide of rice smuggling? Well, for me, cutting off the head is no solution to headache. Okay, we the border that are supposed to be closed is the one in the upper north. That is where bandits are migrating into the country, which is in the Chad and the rest. Those are the places government is supposed to block, not coming into semi border. You understand? And we are talking about African trade, trade, you know, trade exchange between African co continents. Equus. Af Equus. Yeah. You understand? And you are blocking borders that you know is still within the same African. African continent, and you are saying that you want the economy to move forward. What we are supposed to do is not closure of the border. Okay, what we are supposed to do is to is to is to beef up our security patrol on that border to ensure that you know contrabands are not you know shipped or moved into Nigeria. That is the solution to what to that problem. It's not. I'll try closure of that border. It's just like you say, I'm saying that I'm feeling severe headache or migraine now, so I should just go to the doctor and say, oh, yeah, cut off this edge, mm -hmm. you understand, as a solution. Do you understand what I'm saying? So that is not the solution. And I believe that uh, the president should be rightly advised by, you know, those people in the economy team to ensure that, you know, we move this country forward. The, country, the economy, the trade and investment in the country is dwindling down. Then we are also, you know, Destroying it further by closure of border, where we are supposed to have trade, trade, trade exchange. So I, I don't think uh, you know the closure of the border is the solution. And you to, mentioned to the security there um, whilst answering that question. So it takes me to the point of um, assessing the state of security in our country. We read, or I, I mentioned as a, a news story, the killing of um, a Catholic priest in Taraba State. Um, and then the Inspector General of Police has said that um, the police should fish out the perpetrators. What's your assessment of this? Well, that's not even only the problem, because there was a video I watched, somebody posted on, on, online, where Abuja, Kaduna Abuja Road, mm. where we know since, over last, since last year that kidnappers, banditry, operate on those area. Yeah. Okay. Somebody posted a video where there was a gun duel between the kidnapper and the police on that road. And again, some people, we, we saw a, another video where some people were moving and they saw empty cars. Those people may have been kidnapped. You understand? This thing has been existing for many years. It doesn't take government to, to station both ground troop and Naval troop, you understand, to monitor area surveillance, to continue to, to it's, not, it's not that, you know, we will be there for like one, one week, you understand. After one week, no security on that, on that road again, you understand. So like, the last time I was here, I did mention that when Governor Fayemi was, pro was protesting that the police said they want to uh, employ 10,000 police, 
We did argue, I supported Governor Fayemi, that 10,000 police is not enough. Mm. There are a lot of able young men across the country that are willing to join the, the forces to help you know, fight the problem of security we have in this country. But what is the government doing about, about that? You understand? So there are a lot of security funds that should be set up, you understand, both even from private and public, you know, posts to put it together to, so that we can recruit more people, we can have more intelligent gathering system, you understand? Look at FBI, for instance. FBI did not make noise before they arrested the 77 people. Yeah. They didn't make noise, they didn't do anything. Work. They just went straight and because... You, the, the, all the 77 people that were arrested, none of them could say, no, I didn't commit the crime. Because they caught them. You understand? They have done the due diligence. They have gone ahead to find out that... And all the, the evidence. All the evidence. You understand? Mm -hmm. See? So that is, those are the things we, our security apparatus, security system, continue need to learn from. You understand? So that we can have beef up security across the country. The Taraba person that was killed, the person who may have been driving alone. You understand? It is not a crime to to have to be a lone driver. Mm. You understand? If security is in the is, is in place, okay. But right now the person was killed and was burnt in in his car. Yeah. You understand? So people are now afraid now. It's not just about kidnapping any longer. It's anything, also, anything, yeah. anything will happen to you. Mm. The, there's problem. There's security, severe security problem in the country. You understand? We are calling on the president to please find solution to this thing. It can happen to anybody. The last time it was the daughter of Afeni Ferry leader, you understand, that happened in Ore, in Ondo State. Recent, recently, I read that uh, governor, uh, a former governor of uh, Gombe State, Ibrahim Dankwambo, was traveling between Abuja and Kaduna, you understand, even for the fact that he has security details, you know, following him. Nobody knew what would have happened to him. For instance, let's just say, you just say, let me just travel as a Nigerian. It's possible he might, might have been, you know, kidnapped by now. Yeah. You understand? But because he has security details, details. that they repel them, you understand? They, they shot and, you know, they, those people, they, 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 they ran away. So, what of people that do not have such security? Yeah. It could be me, it could be you. Yeah. We could, right now, people are afraid to travel to their, on, on major expressway. So, we need government to do something urgently. Because this problem has been there. We have problem of electricity. We are not having major one security. Our life is not secured any longer. All right. So we need to do something. We are begging government. We know government can do it. Yeah. Government, President Buhari can do it. We are Please begging him. Please hold your thoughts. You're not it. going anywhere. Adelaja Adelia, you stay with me on the program, but we'll take a quick break now on Arise Africa. Stay with us. Glad to have you back. You're watching Arise Africa and still in the studio with me to discuss the state of the nation, including assessing the performance of the present government, is the Chairman Publicity Committee of Action Democratic Party, ADP, Prince Adelaja Adoye. Thank you for still being here. Thank you. All right, let's look at your party now, the Action Democratic Party, the ADP. Um, you are you're hosting a nationwide summit yeah. on um, Sunday on Sunday, a nationwide youth summit, yeah. precisely. How do you intend to encourage youth to actively participate in politics? Well, uh, one of the reasons why we've come up with ADP National Youth Summit mm -hmm. is um, to engage the young people across the country. At least we see that the tide is gradually changing. We see, in fact, we, we, we commend the governor of Oyo State, Engineer Shei Makinde, who is living up to his promise. He said when he become a governor, he is going to appoint a young person as commissioner. He has done it. He appointed someone who just graduated three years ago. 27, 27 year years old, old boy. Young man. You understand? Boy. <laughs> <laughs> you understand? As a commissioner. He has done it. We know a lot of people, including the president, that mm. said, when I come in, you to take part in my government. And but of course, the youngest person that we are seeing in that government is uh, my mom. Uh, uncle, uh, son, son Even Dari. in the same okay. state house of assembly, you have a very yeah, young, a young speaker. person, Debo, you understand, mm -hmm. as a speaker. speaker. So, this is one of the reasons why our party is organizing Youth Summit to mm -hmm. conscientize the young people across the country that they can do it, to mentor them, to let them know that it is possible. They need to try. I am a young person, too. Of course, that is why you see me. I am actively involved in politics. I've been here for a couple of times, I've spoken here, and I am going to be 
the participants on that summit and encourage the young people. If you look back at Nigeria, most of the people you see are the hems of affairs today. Mm. They, some of them started when they were 20, 30, 40. Very young. You understand? Yeah. And they refused to quit the stage. You understand? Of course, power is not given to anybody. You understand? Power is taken. Take it's it. not that we're going to take it violently. We have to orientate ourselves. We have to come together. We have to tell ourselves what and what and what we need to do. We need to organize ourselves. And in ourselves. this summit, you will also be talking about insecurity as a bane of youth development in Nigeria. Tell us about that. Youth insecurity. Yeah. Why do we have social vices in the country? When the country, when economy is not growing in the right direction, young people don't have what to do, okay? They take into yahoo yahoo, they take into all sorts of vices, okay? Right now, insecurity, the only way we can stem insecurity is to provide jobs for young people. We are, in our party, we are, we are advocating for what we call youth investment, okay? We are also calling on government to see how they can set up Bank of Entrepreneurship of Nigeria. There are a lot of people with brilliant ideas all over the places, mm -hmm. across the country. One million, two million, something. But when they don't have, you understand, they don't have, the, the opportunity to have job is clean because how many jobs opportunity offers do we have in the country? Okay? So, but by the time we have more young people, engage doing something okay you will find out that insecurity will begin to be on the decline mm. but when there's nothing they wake up in the morning they look at the sun they see nothing and to talking do talking about youth you recall the case of um, phone thieves who were arrested by members of the uh, sars who were eventually killed two of them were eventually killed what's your take on that very I, quickly before i condemn every form of criminality you understand but law must be law. Law must take its course. Yeah. I was one of the people that protested. In fact, I led a protest in Ikeja, a fellow shrine, some months ago, when Kolade Johnson, Johnson was killed. Yeah, okay, sad. I led the, the protest in Lagos. Mm. Now, why go, police do not have the power, you understand, to summarily shoot and kill Extra people? Judicial Extra judicial killing. Judicial killing. Mm. They don't have that power at all, okay. you understand? The only is to arrest, you understand, hand it over and to the appropriate handover. authority and let the law Take, take its, its course. course. Okay, you that's, that's what we're how going to be. have to leave it. It's been brilliant speaking with you, Prince Adela Jadoye, Chairman, Publicity Committee, Action Democratic Party. Thank you for being here. Thank you so much.